I took a trade here in BABA this morning. And uh, I'm going to call this, it turned out to produce, you know, like a 6000 almost a $7,000 gain. But check this out. It's what I call <laughs> a 360. And I want to show you the mistake I made this morning. All right. I'll show you the mistake I made this morning. I am... I anticipated a short here when the stock was at the low. All right. It didn't break the morning. It didn't break the low, but I just went in with the idea that if I wait for the low to go, I'm probably going to get it down here because I'm sure you guys have realized that the spreads the volatility is so great now that the spreads on a lot of things have opened up quite wide, right? So Baba sometimes can trade at a 40, 50, 60 cent spread. It's crazy. So I went in here. That turned out to be a mistake, right? Because if I gave it the full two minutes, that's not short, right? So I wound up having to stop and reverse to the long side here. So I took the loss, loss from my, my original short to the stop and reverse. And as you see here, there was a violent removal of my entry bar. Okay. Now that's the cri the criteria for the stop and reverse is no follow through after your entry bar and then a violent reversal of your entry bar. Now that's not a just some people are stopping and reversing when just their entry bar is taken out even if it's taken out like that. That's not a stop and reverse. The sudden removal, the sudden and violent removal of your entry bar is what is key. So there are two things that are key. No follow-through and just an immediate violent removal of the reason for your buy. So this turned out to be a 360. All right, so um, this is the 180, 180 degree turn, and this is the 360. Um, I rarely do this. I rarely have to do this, but this mistake basically required it. What should have happened was the long, this is an appropriate long to take and the reversal, not this. All right? Okay? So anyway, um, fortunately, I did this small. I did this normal. And this was small. I did this normal size. Okay? And I did this heavy to basically get back the two losses right on the move to the downside all right Clayton you did the same did you you did the same same trade there oh I see okay but the um this this happens in a variety of things like some traders got I saw got caught in the long on MU, but look at the violent reversal. Okay. Now, this one's a little different because it's not as elevated as the BABA is, right? BABA's a little more elevated above its FAB4, you see? So this has more room to go. 
Remember, I always tell you that in order to judge, when you're going against the position, listen to me carefully, when you're going against position, so if I'm shorting, I'm shorting, I'm shorting in positive territory, right? This is all positive territory. Negative territory is down here. So when you're shorting against position, you should cut the space in half, right, to judge whether or not you have enough distance to actually be going against position. So the short from here to there is two and a half dollars. So that's a that's a that's a very nice move. All right. So always cut that space in half because a lot of people say, Oliver, how far above is far above enough to go short? Well, that's your key. If you would high five someone or be very excited about getting 50% of that space on your trade, if that's an exciting move, then it's far enough. If it's like, eh, it's not, it's okay, but it's not that great, then that's not far enough. All right. Now, um, Garnett's asking, so on the open, are you trading the space back to the 20 MA? Did I just answer that? I'm trading the space back to the 50% area. That's, that's, you've got to judge based on 50% of the space. 